Good morning and welcome to the Stalls TV Morning Show. I'm Josh Ellsworth and I'll be one of your hosts today. With election season upcoming, we want to give you some ideas on how you can make money with people supporting their different candidates. And we're going to tie this, of course, into the presidential election, but we're also going to talk about local elections and opportunities at the state level, the local level, and even in high schools where elections happening. Um, so we should be streaming live on Facebook Live. So if you're joining us on Facebook, we welcome you and ask you to just type in your, in your questions during the presentation and we'll do our best to direct those and answer them. And if you're viewing through our normal GoToWebinar client, you can do the same experience as well. Just type your questions through that and we'll stop at several points to answer questions. So we had a tough time sort of uh, deciding how we would lead into this episode because we know that um, everybody is extremely passionate about their particular candidate and who they're voting for uh, for the election. And when there is belief or passion in a particular cause, whether that's team pride or support of a candidate, there's ultimately the opportunity to sell decorated goods where folks can show support. And so we're going to take that approach and won't be striking any political views here, but we want to show you how to leverage uh, the election season with heat printing in order to make more money. So let's come over to the heat press and we're going to start and we'll be balanced and fair here with uh, different applications, but we've loaded an alternative garment from Sanmar, which is part of their new collection, and we've cut a design out of uh, CAD Cut Premium Plus. And so um, this is a simple application where if you have um, the color of material that you want to decorate with, you can simply create your artwork in CADWorks Live or CorelDRAW or Adobe Illustrator, cut a design on your vinyl cutter, um, and prepare to heat print it. And so in this case, we've um, cut the graphic president of the United States, of course, um, this one in support for a Hillary supporter. And we're going to start by applying the uh, background layer down onto the garment. Wrong. Excuse me? Wrong. Okay. So we have a little bit of uh, interruption going on here. I'm not sure what's happening, but I believe we need to start with the preheat. Is that the issue? That's correct. Okay. So we'll preheat the garment just to remove the moisture and wrinkles. Now we're going to position our design to apply it down the garment. You're killing me over there. <laughs> All right. With CAD Cut Premium Plus, this is a low temp heat transfer film. So we've chosen it, number one, because it is a low temp application on this heat sensitive uh, thin cotton shirt but also because it's extremely soft. So it's going to be comfortable um, on the wearer when they're wearing this garment. And so I'm tacking down the background layer because I'm going to apply this in separate steps and then I'm going to complete a uh, warm to a cool peel. Trying not to stretch the shirt as I'm peeling that. And then I'm going to position my uh, second color of design. Now you'll notice here it lays right in between. We've trimmed the Mylar carrier close enough so it doesn't overlap the other parts of the heat transfer film, which is going to give us a nice application without indenting um, the background layer at all. They call that application without indentation. <laughs> application without indentation is our proclamation. So we're going to do the final <laughs> application for eight seconds. And the reason I covered it is so the other layer that was exposed directly to the heat press um, didn't stick to the heat press or have a risk of you know, perhaps getting adhesive that would squeeze out onto the heat press. And then I'm going to peel this either warm or cool. That's up to you. So you can see with a vinyl cutter, some heat transfer films, and a t-shirt, you can quickly create apparel that can be sold really in a one-off uh, design aspect uh, to support a particular candidate. So this is a concept. Uh, this design is very popular right now for supporters. So you could sell this uh, in your retail store by displaying one, or you could sell it to your network on Facebook or however you reach your customers. And just to be fair and balanced, we're going to show you one more design. Can't stump the Trump. So saying t-shirts are great, whether they're for um, elections or just in general to show your support or to say something. And we're going to talk about that a little bit uh, later as it comes to um, sort of mottos or what mantras in mm -hmm. sports um, because today we're not just going to talk about elections we're also going to talk a bit about um, basketball uh, season tipping off and some uh, designs and trends that we're seeing out there in the market for sportswear. One of the nice things about decorating with CAD Cut especially when it comes to election seasons uh, when we're talking presidential elections 
most of that stuff goes viral very quickly after a debate or after a candidate says something. CADCUT gives you the ability to turn that around the next day to where you don't have to wait and see what the trend is. You can jump on it while it's hot, especially if you have an outlet to sell those items like a web store. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. So sort of rush the application here, but I'm going to let this cool down a bit more and then remove it. Don't rush the process. And if it doesn't want to release at the edge for whatever reason, just let it cool down a little bit more. You can even remove it from the heat press. Or in this case, it started to lift a bit, so I'm going to give it a second application mm. and remove it from the press. So this as well is the um, CAD Cut Premium Plus. I'm going to let it cool down a little bit here. And then we'll go back and try to remove the carrier. Much better. Yeah, we got the application that time I rushed it. So the trick is you want to make sure on your background layers you can just tack them down to speed up the process. But if it's a if it's a product like Premium Plus, it is a warm peel. So for that reason, you know, while um, this will feel the best and the softest on the garment. Um, you'll find that products like fashion film, which is another heat transfer film style, uh, tend to apply a little bit easier for multicolor designs. Uh, you'll compromise a bit of the feel on the garment, but it'll be quicker um, in the application. But since I'm only doing one shirt, I don't mind waiting a few extra seconds uh, to let that cool down and then reapplying it. So as this is finishing up, um, let's head over to the uh, main area, and then I'm going to bring up some other opportunities where you can design uh, for the candidates. So we'll let this cool down if you don't mind peeling those once oh. that uh, finishes. So this is heat transfer film. It's a great way to do customization on demand, be able to produce to order. It's also a great way to try a design concept. If it doesn't sell, you don't have a whole lot of inventory. You just move on to the next design concept. Another uh, process that you could use um, particularly in the presidential race, because there's a lot of different clip art images that are available right mm -hmm. now, are screen printed transfers. So with screen printed transfers, and I'm going to move you over here to the Stalls Transfer Express website, um, when you have an account with Transfer Express, you can actually go into their Easy View designer, and they tend to stay up on trends and current events where you can add clip art and create designs. And basically you're ordering this so it can be screen printed and sent to you. So right when you click the Add Clipboard button, you can see the different candidates are there. Um, you're able to drop them onto your transfer sheet. In this case, we'll add both candidates onto the transfer sheet. And then you're able to sort of size, add designs, and colorize, uh, depending on the way you want to create this. So um, you know, if you wanted to add some uh, text, you can simply, the, the text editor comes up. And then you can add, you know, make America great again, do a font change um, at that point to whatever your selection is, and then it'll pop up on the screen. You can size it, move it around, but basically we're creating uh, a transfer um, that we're going to order in, and it's going to be able to just be applied to the particular size and style of garment that I like. Now, of course, if you wanted to um, colorize the candidates, you start to add cost as you start to add color to transfers. So something I would um, like to suggest is that as you create these, perhaps just ordering um, the candidates in, in a white or a black mm -hmm. um, ink color, and then using CAD Cut to actually add your name drops and sayings and different messaging below that, that's going to give you the ability to add um, different color to it. Because you can see as you start to enter in the image quantity here, let's say we wanted uh, 25 pieces of this, and we're going on 100% cotton garment, you're going to see this is going to cost me $4.68 uh, per sheet mm -hmm. at that point, which is still isn't a bad price. But if I were to, if I were to make these all um, black, then it brings my cost down to 264 sheets. You can see there's cost savings and use every square inch um, of this. You know, if you want to just add, you know, American flag, uh, whatever you would want to do um, and create, it'll read out the design dimension size here. And you can see the whole um, size of the sheet, which is 11 a quarter by 14, to basically create and be able to order transfers um, ready to heat apply. Yeah. And this isn't just great, as we said, for presidential elections, but there's all different types of elections that we wanted to talk about.
Yeah. What are some of the other comments? That's you throwing it back to yeah. me. Yeah. All right. So I'll bring it back to the um, easy view. And you can see um, there's a whole lot of ideas. So basically, there's a whole uh, layouts area in occasions, uh, elections on the Transfer Express website. And this gives you basically the templates that are changeable. So things like uh, elections for mayor, mm -hmm. um, city council, uh, class president, you know, state senators, judges, uh, governors, state representatives, even commissioners. So you basically, anytime there is support of a particular individual um, or cause, mm -hmm. it's an opportunity to let people show their support through decorated apparel or even de other items that are decorated. Okay, so let's elect to change the topic. I don't want to yet. There's one more thing. That one I more thing. Important. One more thing because elections aren't always boring. Am Some I going to have to cut you off like Some the moderator does? Yes. We're done. S sometimes elections need a little more bling. Um, and okay. for that, this is, you know, I thought these were really cool. So if on the wild side, um, of course, we're tapping into it here with rhinestone transfers. If mm -hmm. you visit thewildside.com um, and sort by their uh, political uh, transfers, these were really popular. Uh, when President Obama was running mm -hmm. uh, for president, I saw a lot of shirts out there uh, uh, for females uh, primarily. And I know you said you would wear a rhinestone transfer. I, I would wear one of these rhinestone transfers, yes. But they were females primarily where they had a rhinestone print just on a basic you know, unisex black t-shirt or ladies uh, black t-shirt where the rhinestones tend to show best on. But mm -hmm. you can see um, the price is $9.50. That's if you were ordering retail per piece. Uh, once you actually click into one of these, um, you're going to save 50% if you order 12 pieces. So, you know, order 12 of whatever candidate you want to support, put them in stock. I know when you show this or somebody sees this, um, if you can get them in quick enough and turn this, you're going to generate orders and, and word of mouth advertising. And this is something that's very shareable yeah. out there. Now, one of the big questions that we get, uh, especially when it comes to different size transfers, whether you're making them or whether you're ordering them from somewhere else, is where exactly do you put them on the garment? What is a full front decoration, what's the proper placement of the left chest? And I think we have a solution for that that Stahl's just released. Man, you're just throwing lobs, right? I am. <laughs> throwing lobs. So um, I'll take that one and dunk it home, and let's look at our design and placement guide, the ultimate guide to design, size, and placement. This is something brand new. If you visit stalls.com, uh, you can download this. It's right up in the top header. I think it's the second or third image in. Um, but this is something that was uh, written by Danielle, who uh, manages uh, social media for us. And mm -hmm. so she's really in tune with uh, customers, their questions. Uh, you can see Danielle there. Hi, Danielle. And we go down through. And basically, this is calling out your placement for left chest graphics. It's telling you the length down that it needs to be placed. This is definitely the top cut question mm -hmm. um, that we get from new decorators especially. So you kind of scroll down through this. There's also the athletic portion of it. I know I'm sort of firing through. I don't want to show you all of it, but you get the concept. This is going to help you with placement application. Just go to the website. It is absolutely free uh, to download. What, should, what do we search when we visit stalls.com to download it? Well, if you visit, um, you can search uh, the design placement guide. Okay. Or you can just, you know, it's right on the top header. It's like the second or third image in. Just click and download. All right. Sounds great. Now, one of the things that we love to share with you on Monday mornings is our look of the week. And these looks are pulled from either the Stalls All Things Heat Printing Facebook page, things that are emailed to us at tv at stalls.com, or um, posts that we're tagged in on Instagram, which is at Stalls TV or hashtag Stalls TV. You can also hashtag Project Press It. But this is our look of the week this week. And it is from Carrie Pickett. And what we're looking at here, if you're looking at it and you're saying, wait a minute, this isn't a t-shirt. Normally we show t-shirt designs, but what we're decorating here are Chromalux panels. So this was a sublimated heat transfer on Chromalux panels. Each one of those panels is about um, 12 inches by 12 inches to make a full two foot by three foot design that you can post onto a wall, into a storefront, wherever, something like that might make sense. Yeah, even in an office space. So I actually have one of these uh, metal sublimated panels in my mm -hmm. office um, of a couple basketball players. You may know Michael Jordan, Larry Bird. Who? Yeah, exactly. So, But it's a, it's a money-making opportunity. So mm -hmm. if you have sublimation, if you have a heat press, these particular ones were pressed on a Fusion. Mm -hmm. um, Carrie shared in her, her Facebook post there. But basically, it's so simple. You just print high photo quality image, assuming you have a nice resolution and a nice photo quality. Um, these are specially coated to accept sublimation, mm -hmm. and it's actually the um, tin or the uh, aluminum uh, text uh, coloring to it 
um, which is awesome. And then, you know, black and white designs tend to look really great on this, mm -hmm. um, even full color as you saw in the photo there. Yeah, and sublimation, even on that level, by decorating those 12 by 12 sheets, it's not an expensive process to get into. You can start sublimating if you already have the heat press for under $2,000. Kind of the same thing, a uh, similar investment to vinyl cutting. If you have both of those, you have your full color option for the hard goods and the polyesters. You also have your CAD cut options for single one and two color stuff uh, to go on any other type of garment. Yeah, and if you have the ability to do this, it's a great opportunity to network with loco, local, loco, yeah. Local. Loco locals. Photographers yeah. um, that may be looking, uh, outsourcing to a color lab or something, and you may be able to connect the dots a little quicker uh, by being next to them there in co-op. For sure. Okie dokie. All right. So any questions coming in right now, Joe? Absolutely quiet. Joe's laughing over there at us. I do have one. Okay. And um, question is, what site, um, what was the name of the site for the design placement guide? Uh, it's just stalls.com. S-T-A-H-L-S.com. I spelled that right, right? You did. Okay. That's always good. Yeah. Okay. So now on to basketball season. So we talked about the important Tuesday that's coming up that's uh, election day. Mm -hmm. And now um, the more immediate Tuesday, as in tomorrow, is tip off of the NBA season. And this is one of my favorite times of year because I'm a big basketball fan. Mm -hmm. And so we want to show you some different inspiration from around the web and retail brands um, that you can draw on to create um, designs that are trending in sportswear uh, for this fall and winter. Mm -hmm. So we're going to start off with. Um, sayings. Um, as I alluded to earlier, um, you're seeing a lot of just different mottos or mantras that are um, stack text that are, you know, really simple and easy to create. Mm -hmm. So as you're selling to schools and teams, uh, considering, consider try to, try to tap into your um, creative ability or even consult um, with a player or a teenager to create some sayings. You know, there was a, uh, a guy that we went to school with back in junior high who played basketball, and, and we still say his saying to this day. He said, basketball's my life. Yeah, which would make a great t-shirt. It would design. make a great t-shirt. I always thought that, and we just haven't made it, but it looks like East Bay's taken over for us. Yeah, and I saw another one when I was searching for this episode that's uh, basketball is my girlfriend, right? Mm -hmm. And on okay. the other side, I've seen, because uh, my daughter's in dance, I've seen dance shirts that said dance is my boyfriend. So. Yeah. Just playing a little bit into that. Um, the next thing I want to show you, and this one's taken from Under Armour, is just we're seeing uh, more um, incorporation of arrows and shapes, uh, geometric shapes, um, into as design elements, as part of the design. And so you see the uh, Steph Curry shirt here um, that's been created, and I think the Steph Curry 3s mm -hmm. um, are dropping here um, later this week, which is a basketball shoe for those of you that aren't familiar. but. A lot of times you see inspiration for design sort of drawing on mm -hmm. um, silhouettes of basketball shoes and colorways of basketball shoes. And so we see a lot of uh, pops of color. Um, you see metallic in this design, mm -hmm. also like an aqua blue. A lot of arrows um, and shapes bringing. Yeah, you can tell also by the name that it's a, a warrior name. It's kind of a, a cultural reference in the, the geometric shapes from a particular culture being used. Yeah, and a play on Golden State Warriors, I believe. Yep. Okay. So uh, the next one that I want to show you is sort of, this one's really easy, uh, the, the reverse out, we'll call it, right? Is that just basically the ability to encapsulate text in a block and do a reverse weed um, to do a, basically, um, draw on something different than just a stack text design, make it more of a design element. It's really easy to execute. Can you explain using the number in place of the letter? It's popular. I know it reads re two packed, right? Yeah. Um, it's obviously supposed to be an S, um, in case you didn't get that. But um, numbers are very popular in sports, um, of course. And so substituting numbers as a, um, a character in, in text happens a lot. You also see the substitution of clip art, mm -hmm. um, whether that's a basketball or a school logo that will play into. Uh, the text as part yeah. of the design. So we see the Jumpman logo here for uh, the Michigan Wolverines. This, I believe, was the first team that the Jumpman logo is uh, being represented on. Normally it's a traditional Nike swoosh or an Under Armour or whoever else is providing those jerseys. I know Ted blogged about um, this morning the, uh, what were those jerseys called, that the NFL is using on Thursday nights. Uh, I want to say Color Pop, but that's not yeah, it. Yeah, it's Color something jerseys. Color Rush. What, color yeah. Rush jerseys. Yeah. What do you think about those? Um, I'm, what do I think about them? Yeah. Um, Have you liked any of them? Yeah, I'd like them. I would probably buy them. I tend to go a little bit out of the box from traditional. I know there's a lot of uh, 
traditional folks out there that think the team uniform shouldn't be messed with, mm -hmm. um, but you're seeing um, new innovative styles, which I tend to relate to and like a lot, especially when it incorporates bright colors. And then you see the, the other side of it where there's a lot of uh, retro styles um, coming out. So I'm a, I'm a fan of both of those. I like change. I like the ability to um, express yourself um, not only in fashion but on the field in that way. Using yeah. numbers instead of letters. Yeah, whatever yeah, works. Cool. Whatever works. Why not? Got it. All right. The next one I want to show is, uh, speaking of numbers, is just tonal effects. And this one's well documented here, but we're seeing this um, in new t-shirt designs all around, just tone on tone. So you see how we're, um, how Nike, well, not we're, Nike <laughs> on this Chris Paul shirt is leveraging the black on black um, with the gloss effect. Mm -hmm. um, also mixing and matching number styles. So numbers don't have to be the same color. Um, they don't necessarily have to be the same font when it's on a t-shirt and designed for fashion, mm -hmm. um, you can get really creative. There also seems to be a pattern in that in that particular design. Yes. So um, how would a customer recreate that look on their own? What what process would you recommend? Believe it or not, that one can actually be vinyl cut and weeded fairly easily mm -hmm. um, because if you look at it, all of that comes out in sort of one pool or one weed mm -hmm. as long as you don't have a material that breaks too easy and you're cutting it cleanly. Um, so a knife cutter works. Um, it's really all in the artwork setup. Um, where you're taking a, um, a pattern and making it vector mm -hmm. and then basically uh, power clipping it or inserting it into the number. Gotcha. Um, don't have time to go through that today, but it's a, it's a fairly simple process that's been documented in like the CADWorks live tutorials on Stalls TV. Okay. All right. Another one, um, this is more of a blank apparel style, and I know you're not a fan of this. I personally not, like it. It's the Bill Belichick look. Right, <laughs> a bit, but a little more uh, street savvy and uh, fashion. So you ah. have the the nicer uh, tailored cut. Um, you have a thicker drawstring, and these short sleeve um, hoodies are all the rage right now. And I think uh, you should order these and merchandise them to your customers, especially um, for sportswear applications. We see the sixty-five dollar price tag there. If you're ordering from a blank supplier, about how much do you think we can expect to pay and what can we get back out of it? Do you think we can get the full sixty-five dollars at a retail? Um, probably not because you don't have the Nike or Adidas brand on at this point, but Bella actually has this in their fast fashion line which mm. we documented I believe last week on the morning show. Uh, Courtney um, had, had covered that alongside uh, Karen. And you know you can expect to get this hoodie. You know this one's a little trendier, so you're going to be up towards you know the fifteen dollar price mm -hmm. point. But I see no problem selling this decorated for the thirty five to forty five dollar price point with you know team branding on it. Okay, so much much like the range of the oversized t-shirts, maybe just shy of those. Yeah, yeah, okay. I think that's fair. And then another um, trend, which is directly beside it, uh, particularly for uh, basketball warm ups and game day apparel, is the tapered uh, jogger where it comes tight to the ankle because. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to show off their sneakers. Do they? I do at least. I know you've always been a fan of showing off sneakers, and I have a few friends who are really into what's called the sneaker game. <laughs> the sneaker game. Yeah. All right, speaking of the sneaker game, another popular thing in uh, basketball-inspired designs is they actually create designs that match uh, popular sneakers and iconic styles. So one of the most iconic styles that are out there is the Nike foam posit. Mm -hmm. um, it sort of has a nice hard shell. I think they were first donned by uh, Penny Hardaway. You may remember him. I do remember Penny Hardaway. Uh, from the Orlando Magic. But um, I picked up a, a pair of these uh, supposedly in the Yeezy or the Kanye West colorway, mm -hmm. um, the Pro Platinum uh, foam posits, and then uh, went into the lab here and created um, a t-shirt design that I thought matched them uh, pretty cool. And so I want to share that video now uh, from our Project Press It series.
So you've always been kind of into streetwear from all the way back in the days of you had a little website called pimpashirt.com where you taught people <laughs> how to decorate in these uh, types of styles. I know you recently went on vacation and had a chance to visit some of the stores that you kind of look to for inspiration in New York City. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that trip? Yeah, the trip was pretty cool. First off, I was celebrating 10 years with my wife, which is Well, congratulations. Also, Anybody really who exciting. can live longer than 10 years with you is... <laughs> congratulations. God her. bless her. All right. You did, by the way. I, I know. And the, uh, so I went to a few, bunch of different stores there. We did a fair amount of shopping. Of course, high on my list were um, sneakers. So we uh, visited a store um, called the Flight Club, mm -hmm. which had literally thousands of sneakers on the wall. They were actually shrink-wrapped. Um, they didn't do as much t-shirts to match, but they had all those foam posit styles, all the Jordan styles from all the years, mm -hmm. um, retros, um, and then they had even stuff in showcases, which was cool. But the other big thing I noticed walking around is that a lot of these retail spaces had heat press. So, for instance, uh, my wife wanted to shop in the Ugg store. Mm -hmm. um, they had a heat press there for personalizing with rhinestones on the Ugg boots, mm -hmm. uh, which was really cool, actually. One of the max heat presses that were used in that video. Um, Stopped in a place called Kith, which is another sneaker store that was co-oping, I believe, with, with Nike. And they had heat presses for DTG on the spot, creating mm -hmm. designs, you know, streetwear-like designs. And then, uh, of course, we went in the American Girl store, have a seven-year-old daughter, so picking up a little souvenir. And they had little small uh, six-by-six heat presses. So as you just walk around, you know, you start to see heat printing growing more and more as a category. And I certainly think, you know, those are three unique applications, but it's a great... Um, it's a great product um, that you can use for any retail on-demand customization. Okay, so I know you also wanted to show us how to make some of the designs that really fit uh, with those sneakers and we can use CADWorks Live for that? Yeah, yeah, I have a couple designs pulled up here. I know we're approaching the, the sort of the end of the show here, but a couple other design tips as you look towards um, fall and winter, um, particularly in a basketball uh, theme here. Um, I made this version uh, in a dance design that was really well received by the particular dance school mm -hmm. um, that we showed it here. But this is a, a dream for somebody that does vinyl cutting in weeds. This looks like a mistake where you don't have the centers right. of the letters that yeah. you have to pull out, but it's actually a trend right now um, where you have sort of no holes in the center of the text. It almost looks like a, I don't know if you call that a stencil or sort of a punch out or a die yeah. cut mm -hmm. um, of the numbering, but it's really simple to execute. All you're going to do is drop your text on there. Um, you're going to break it apart by curves, basically getting it down to the most detailed level after you have your text. You can see how it breaks it all out. And then I'm just going to take a box, carefully draw it around all the center pieces, hit delete, take a box, draw it all around the center pieces without exceeding the top edge of my text, hit delete, and then I'm going to group it back together using the condense feature. Colorize it, hitting the right button please, thank you. And then you have the design ready to go. So you see how that text element can be incorporated more mm -hmm. into a full design with some perhaps script or other text. Mixing and matching fonts is always popular. Mm -hmm. The other thing we see a lot is um, what I call the half and half, which basically is splitting text. And you're seeing this even on uh, NFL and college sidelines in mm -hmm. football season right now, where we're simply splitting text in half and colorizing it different. So this one's really simple to do. Just drop your text on there, uh, make a small rectangle, um, very thin that you want the gap space, and drop it on your text in the location that you see fit. I'm going to select both items, and then simply do a back minus front command, mm -hmm. basically punch it out, uh, delete my rectangle, and then I have my uh, two-tone text. Now I can break it apart and just colorize um, in whatever way I see fit. I accidentally grab that part of the G here. but. Um, just colorize the whole design, load mm -hmm. your different colors, cut it. This is a dream from heat application because as long as you trim that close, mm -hmm. you should be able to stack these pieces and heat apply them in one step because there's no direct overlap. Um, so these are some of the things uh, that we're seeing trending out there in, in streetwear and particularly um, in the sports um, side of the market. Mm -hmm. And we're doing a class on, I believe it's pretty close to New Year's Eve, um, where we're talking about industry ignited trends for 2017. So if you like this type of content, uh, we'll be doing a full class dedicated on that that you can sign up for on stallstv.com. Got it. So tomorrow, NBA season tips off. Two weeks later, we have election day. The week in between, we have Halloween.
We do have it's Halloween. It's pretty exciting. We are going to have a costume contest here on the morning show next week. So we invite you to tune back in for that. Yeah, join us live Monday of next week, 11 a.m. Eastern Time, either on Facebook Live or through signing up on StallsTV.com for the Stalls TV Morning Show. Go make some money. Thanks for watching.